Microplastics are small particles of plastic, usually less than five millimeters or half a centimeter in diameter. Now these can either be primary microplastics, so it's something like a microbead or a glitter that's being made to be small, or they can be a secondary microplastic, which is they're formed in the environment from breakdown of larger plastic items. And that also includes the fibers that are released from textiles and clothes during washing. They can come from bits of plastic in the environment degrading as they age and get exposed to sunlight and become brittle as they break down. They might be fragments of paint coming off buildings, bits of dust from synthetic rubber tyres. Basically any plastic that's sitting out in the environment is going to break down eventually to produce microplastics. The real world impact of microplastics, we don't fully understand. And that's why there are a lot of research projects that are underway. The first project to see if we had plastic fragments from the breakdown of larger plastic items in New Zealand was undertaken here at the University of Canterbury and we started looking at beach sediments. From there the research portfolio has grown and we are now looking at microplastics across the spectrum from the atmosphere to the oceans, remote regions, we've looked in urban waterways, we are looking at the impacts on organisms, we're also looking at the chemicals they both release and accumulate. I'm looking at how microplastics act as vectors for heavy metals in the environment. So they're toxic substances um, that can absorb and desorb from the surfaces of microplastics. And I'm looking at how they accumulate on different types of plastics and mainly in the marine environment. Um, and then looking at if there's effects to organisms that might ingest them. As part of my research, we're looking into where airborne microplastics are found in New Zealand and other remote locations. And we are also interested in studying the role that they play in the wider climate system. We're trying to find out how far microplastics can travel through the air and also how polluted remote environments can be. A lot of my work this past year has been looking at snowfall samples, which I've collected from Antarctica, as well as deposition samples from across New Zealand. We recently reported on airborne microplastics in New Zealand for the first time. We actually carried out the study here at the University of Canterbury and found that the levels of microplastics floating around in our area are comparable with many cities overseas where they've done similar types of studies. So this tells us that um, you know, we like to think of our clean green image in New Zealand, but we're not immune from microplastic pollution and so it's important to take action here as it is anywhere else. Like all materials, we're going to have to evaluate our use of plastic. These are very permanent materials that will last for a very, very long time. Most of the plastic that has ever been manufactured, unless it's been incinerated, is still somewhere on Earth. We've so far produced over 380 billion tonnes of plastics and 79% of that ends up in landfills or in the environment. So only 21% of plastics actually become recycled. So we are left with a lot of waste. We hope our research will contribute to making a difference. We want the information that we produce to contribute to the management of plastics, to help with decisions that will need to be made about when we use plastics, when we use alternatives, and we hope the information we produce about some of the unwanted properties of plastics then can help inform the development of alternatives to make sure that we don't recreate the issues that we have now.